Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a very unusual UFO case. It's got some very strange elements to it. Among them is the witnesses claim that our military is working along with reptilian humanoids. The case involves a man I call Ramon. That's not his real name. Uh, he allowed his real name to be used. He's actually been on the radio a couple of times and has reported his case to UFO organizations. Uh, but he has a large family, and uh, that's they're all having encounters. It's kind of why I decided not to uh, use his real name. Uh, Ramon was born in 1947 in San Fernando, California. He was actually living in a housing complex, a government housing project called Bazelon Homes. This is for military families. It was located right at the base of Hanson Dam. And his story really begins when he was six years old in 1953, one evening, when he was shining a flashlight outside his window up at the top of Hanson Dam, and a strange light flashed back. Uh, he communicated with it for a few moments, and uh, the next day he's out with his friends, and a UFO shows up. It's got portholes around it. It's a silver saucer. There are figures inside. They wave at the kids. And this object actually lands at the base of Hanson Dam. Uh, Ramon runs up to it along with about six other kids. All of them run away. They're too frightened. Ramon approaches this object and is actually taken inside. Uh, this was his first abduction. He doesn't remember much except seeing colored lights. Uh, but following that, he had a series of abductions over the next week and uh, was taken to this object which landed at the base of Hanson Dam in the middle of the night, pulled him out of his room, levitated him through the wall and into this craft where he does recall being physically examined. Uh, he remembers being sat down in this dentist chair-like device and seeing a field of stars before him. He remembers seeing greys and then examining him. It was a painful examination, not pleasant. This is how his experiences began. And following this, he continued to have a lot of unusual experiences. The Bazelon housing complex uh, was closed down in 1954. Sh they had to move out. Uh, they moved into an apartment where they had more unusual experiences. Ramon spent some time as a teenager in Fresno, where he had further missing time abductions. Uh, back in San Fernando, age 17, he was having a tough time. Uh, there was a lot of gang activity and crime activity. He decided to join the Marines to get some direction in his life. His father had been in the military and said, that's fine. They signed a waiver for him since he was underage. His father gave him one piece of advice, don't sign up for any special projects. So Ramon signed up for the Marines and found himself stationed at Camp Pendleton. Uh, Camp Pendleton is actually known for a lot of UFO activity. Uh, there are several cases uh, that have taken place there. I do know of one from Leonard Stringfield, in which an officer from Camp Pendleton was taken to photograph, apparently, a UFO that had been retrieved from by the military. So yeah, there's definitely a UFO connection there. Ramon was not aware of that. However, he was placed into headquarters and service and immediately given a uh, top secret clearance. This was pretty shocking to him. Uh, he's 17 years old. He doesn't know quite what's going on. He's trying to orient himself in his job. He was there about two weeks when he heard a conversation right outside his office between a corporal and another higher ranking officer about UFOs that were being held in a hangar in the military. He was shocked to hear this, thought it might have been a mistake. Later he realized he was probably being set up because it was shortly after that he was taken with a small group of Marines uh, to see a sergeant who gave them the opportunity to join a special project for the betterment of their country. Uh, Ramon did not want to join any special projects. Uh, he did not volunteer, not to his memory, but the next thing he knows, he finds himself on a bus with blacked out windows. He's being driven to a very secret location along with the other Marines. 
Everyone seems to be very dazed. They go through a number of roadblocks till they finally reach a military hangar. Uh, they are marched out into the hangar, and there's the sergeant who initially offered them this, quote, special project. Each of the Marines was taken and injected with some drug, hypnotized, questioned, and put back into rank uh, formation, including Ramon. Then the sergeant and uh, some other officers opened up the hangar doors to reveal a UFO. Ramon said it was very much like the saucer he had seen as a child, uh, same size, same shape. And shortly after that, the sergeant marched out a number of reptilian humanoids, male, wearing dark green uniforms, which had an insignia on them, a badge of a dragon-like creature. They were wearing boots. They were marching shoulder to shoulder with the sergeant and the other military officials and uh, walked right, at one of them, Ramon says, walked right up to him. Says the figure was probably about seven feet tall, uh, many times larger than a human being, very, very strong, with a scaly skin. Uh, he, it was hard for him to describe what they looked like because he says it was very scary, uh, but he says their eyes were snake-like. Uh, he doesn't remember exactly what happened after this, except for that the other soldiers broke rank. Uh, he didn't, and they were very impressed with that. Uh, but yeah, he has a lot of memory issues with this. This, this is a snippet that came back to him uh, after it occurred. Next thing he knows, he finds himself back at Camp Pendleton, and boom, he's being shipped off to Vietnam. Uh, so he had a lot of unusual experiences in Vietnam as well. Uh, he, it was his job to identify any aircraft that were in the sky, and he said they sure saw a lot of UFOs. It was almost as if they were being followed. Uh, while in Vietnam, he wasn't there long before he was very badly injured and had to uh, be taken to the hospital and was sent to Yokosuka Naval Hospital in Japan. Uh, he had more unusual experiences there. He met a black chaplain who surprised him when he came up to Ramon and said that he knew all about his abductions as a very young child. Uh, Ramon was surprised because he had never told anyone about this. Uh, this black chaplain warned Ramon to have faith in God because he was going to be abducted again. Ramon is a very religious person. Uh, he was sent home back to the United States uh, and got out of combat and into food service back at Camp Pendleton where he had more strange experiences. Uh, he worked in the kitchen in the cafeteria very early in the morning, like 3 a.m., and would often see this one guy who looked very strange uh, with very elongated eyes. Uh, sometimes there was more than one of them. They looked identical. He walked up to them and looked and saw that if you looked up close at the back of their neck, their skin was translucent. I said it was very much like looking into the embryonic form of a, a hornet or some sort of insect, uh, but clearly not human. So he's had a lot of this sort of recall that's coming back to him, you know, currently. Uh, following this, he had a lot of UFO experiences. In 1973, he got married and started a family. Didn't last long, two years only, because uh, the, his wife kept seeing greys in his house, and she ended up divorcing him. Uh, around this time in 1974, his friends convinced him to go back to Hanson Dam to go fishing. And uh, no sooner was he there when this UFO comes zooming from the top of Hanson Dam and skims over his head. It was witnessed by all his friends. Uh, he had more sightings. Uh, in 1982, while working in a auto plant in, or a welding plant in North Hollywood, he had a series of missing time abductions while driving home. Uh, in the last one, his car was taken over and driven almost all the way to Palmdale, 
where he was uh, pulled on board a craft and had a very extensive abduction. There was greys on board. They tried to make him breed with a human female. He refused. They showed him the control room and how they operate their craft. Uh, they took him into another room where they showed him hybrid babies and sort of con containers, bell jar-like containers. They uh, then took him to a sort of a dentist-like chair again and tried to get a genetic sample from him. He fought with them. He pushed one of the greys down. They sedated him. He, he prayed to God to get out of there, passed out. And uh, when he woke up, he saw something very unusual. Uh, there was what who he believes is actually the archangel Michael, uh, an angel. <laughs> and standing next to him was the black chaplain he had seen at Yokosuka Naval Hospital in Japan and other angels who basically escorted him out of the craft. Uh, it's a very unusual element I've seen in other abductions. Um, this is what Ramon is reporting. So that was his main experience, but he's had a lot of paranormal events, you know, light bulbs exploding, effects electromagnetic equipment. Uh, he had a series of phone calls where he would hear metallic voices, uh, has a real problem with ringing in his ears, uh, has been to the doctor, and there's evidence of an implant in his body, as well as him having surgery that he has not had. Uh, in 2007, while we were doing an interview, uh, afterwards his son came running up and said a UFO had landed in the street while we were on the phone, actually. So yeah, a lot of unusual experiences. His case is still ongoing. Uh, he's connected with, he spoke with Jalen Hynek. His case was researched by Isabel Epperson. Uh, he's you know, been dealing with this for a very long time. He's now 73. Uh, his most recent sighting that I know of was January 2020, this year, uh, with his son. They both saw an object close up. So yeah, his case is ongoing, very complex, and uh, yeah, I think it's an important case. Ramon's case is told in Chapter 3 of my book, On Board UFO Encounters. Uh, it's an amazing case. Uh, he does not know why he's, he's been contacted. Uh, it does stretch back at least two or three generations in his family, but he does feel he may have been some part of a secret military program, which began at the Bazelone Homes Government Housing Project. You can see in this photo here of the housing project, there are two glowing objects in the sky. Uh, there's no mention uh, in this with this photo about what these objects were, but I know it took place uh, around the same time as uh, Ramon's encounters. So yeah, something very strange is definitely going on there. And uh, thanks very much for listening.